The first funerals for the littlest victims of the school shooting in Connecticut were held today. Noah Posner is the youngest victim. He just celebrated his sixth birthday with his twin sister last month. Six-year-old schoolmate Jack Pinto was also laid to rest this afternoon. His parents say Jack loved the New York Giants. Meanwhile, today was the first day back to class with students across the nation since the shooting. The Asheville Police and the Baucom County Sheriff's Office increased their presence in schools today. News 13's Ingrid Alstead joins us live from Estes Elementary School. Ingrid, will permanent changes be made to security in city and county schools? You know, it's too early to say, but state and local officials have started that conversation, and so have parents, everyone just wanting to keep their children safe. Children roaming the halls Monday morning, an image less comforting for some parents today, parents like Mark Fields. We are awoken again yet to the harsh, brutal reality that these things can happen in our town, in our schools. With a nine-year-old daughter at Fairview Elementary School, he's troubled, he says, to not see a sheriff's deputy on campus. When I woke up Saturday morning, I said I cannot just sit down and, 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 and let another week or a month pass without doing something. After hearing news of the school shooting in Connecticut, he drafted this petition and sent it to county leaders asking for an armed officer at every school. I believe if they knew that they had to get through an armed police officer, they would think twice. The Buncombe County Sheriff's Office says they don't have the manpower to post a deputy at every school. It's not necessarily something you can throw money at it and say we've done our job. Buncombe County Commission Chairman David Gans says the county will discuss possible changes in a security plan with law enforcement agencies. There's a lot that the schools have done to protect the children and the teachers and the educators. But anytime something like this happens, we have to throw all that out and say, are we doing the best we can? And on a state level, Attorney General Roy Cooper says they will study the events that took place in Sandy Brook. We'll look at it very carefully. We will examine it very carefully and see if there are any laws in North Carolina that need to be changed that could help us either prevent something like this from happening or making sure that we are even more ready for such a tragedy in the event that it occurs here in North Carolina. They are the guardians of our children for eight hours a day. They need to be safe and protective, and so do the teachers. And Fields isn't alone, like this woman who signed Fields' petition saying, we pay taxes and we should make protection of our children first and foremost. And Fields is hoping for 10,000 signatures. If you'd like to sign that petition, just head over to WLOS.com and click on more info. Reporting live in Arden, Ingrid Alstead, News 13.